bargaining table. There were the Nolans and Dolans of Gaddy's cotton diggers and then snowy. And sensical folk is now the room in a whirly gig with Julia and I. Some bannies, the nonsense, and tipped him a twist of a real orange shake. That girl, she really got mad at me. Does the you think all the ceilings that fall for his friend? Three weeks at Brooks Academy, learning to dance for Lenny and Bob. Well, how are you this evening, everyone? It is so good to be back. Oh, my goodness. I, so, I apologize for being a wee bit late, but you know, Gretchen, she's not much of a hostess. She didn't even have me play. A glass of Irish porter. I had to go pour me own. Oh my gosh. Here I am coming out of the way to do her show for her. And she doesn't even have a decent glass of Irish ready for me. But that's the way it is. What's well, fine. I'll finish off the bottle and she'll never know. Well, yes, yeah, she probably will. Oh, well. How are you this evening? Are you having a fine time? It is a glorious day here in the Northwest. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. She, I got here last night. And she and Bob took me out to do some photographing. And they went out to this place out on this road called Heron Island Road or something like that. And there's this little, little tiny ferry. ferry. It's kind of like the ones we have in Ireland that go from Ireland to Ireland and stuff like that. But it only takes about eight to nine cars. And there was a few cars and they had another one waiting and it was going on. And it, but then the sunset, oh, the sunset over... It was just glorious, and you could see the Olympic Mountains. Ah, we don't have mountains like that in Ireland, that's for sure. That's a true thing I'd really love. I, we had the water. Yes, we had the water all around us, but we don't have the mountains quite like that. Oh, my goodness. It is so good to be here, and I'm going to say my greetings to everybody here. Let's see who's here. We got... Oh, Miss Linda is here. She's fine and dandy, although she's got this kind of pink thing around her. Her name, I don't quite understand why there's no green and orange. And kiss the Blarney Stone for luck, yes. And Susan's here with this J. Porn Keller. Susan, it's good to see. I saw what you sent in. That was quite lovely. I'm excited to share it. Um, and there, there, let's see. Yeah, and there's Susan. And a green rumor, that's Mr. Larry. Oh, no, he's he's such a funny gentleman. It's got it's delightful pit, picture of, of well, of probably of Gretchen trying to be mead. But this is it's just delightful. It was just delightful. And I'll be sharing that in show and tell, too. Let's see who else is here. Uh, oh, Miss Tamara is here from down under. Tamara, how are you tomorrow in Australia. Oh my goodness. It is I'm sure it's it must be it's you're coming out of your winter, aren't you? No, let's see. Or you're going into your winter. That's right. That's da -da 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 -da. yes, you're going into your winter, into your fall. Oh my goodness. I I don't I don't envy you that. I don't envy you that, no. Let's see. <laughs> I'm sure folks are interested in, and I have been asking how Mr. Robert is doing, how Bob is doing. He's still got quite of a cough, and um, he had to go in, I guess, last Friday or so, back into the doctor for another scan um, for some reason. He'll find out on Tuesday how the uh, pneumonia is coming along. He's he's feeling a bit better, but he's still he's not up to snuff completely. So, you know, you have to, you have to, to, to take it easy but he did he's up there he's made a fine corned beef and he's got some vegetables ready to be going in he's just waiting for us to get all done with that through the show and he's going to have a fine dinner for us and I'm just delighted to do that uh, just getting some lunch and a glass of red oh that sounds delightful Tamara ah yes oh oh Yes, happy St. Patrick's Day. It's a delightful thing to have around. Such a good celebration. And it's always so much fun because I never quite know what books Gretchen's going to find for me. And, you know, it's just one of those things. There's, there, there. Let's see who else is here. Oh, everybody's saying hello to each. Lads and lassies are here. Um, oh, Angie's finishing up making videos. Oh, good for her. I did uh, quite a few little ones today of the little Irish things. It was kind of fun. And uh, I took Aldo for a walk this morning when I first got here. We went down to the beach 
and that was quite fun. It was, it was something. Although there was something swimming in the, it and I it could have sworn I saw this sparkle like two scuba divers going, but they, they were going too fast for scuba divers. I mean, like zipping along more like the river otters or the sea otters that we have out here, and I just I couldn't and I couldn't get all I, all I had was Gretchen's phone with me, so I couldn't couldn't really tell. And Aldo was no. No help whatsoever. He was just sniffing away as he sniffing does. And that's the way it is. Um, let, let's see. Potatoes in the stew. That really hungry clothes. No, but what? I know. I had to go find it myself. And it's, a, it's a shame. It's a shame. I don't, I don't understand what's happened to her. She's just, she's just fallen apart. I don't know, no, you know. Her great grandmother, Sarah, would be turning over. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, no more green meal for me. <laughs> and there is Miss Angie. Ah, Angie's here. She's checking in and saying hello to everybody. She must have gotten done with her videos. Yes. Corned beef and cabbage. It's it's the only time I like cabbage. Oh, I saw broccoli, so I know that'll be green. Ah, I had my bro some broccoli last night. Terrible hostess, yes, terrible hostess, just don't know. Anyway, but I see, oh, let me check just one more time in the mail. See if anybody else sent anything in in the last, oh, Tamara did, Tamara did. I had a, a wee bit of a craziness there trying to get some stuff up and going. So let me see what she's got here. Ah, good. So we got back here and... When we get to that her point, I'll just pull them over into her pictures. And hang on just a moment. I can just do this. Yes, there we go. Go to Tamara's and I can get rid of all these other ones that she had. Da -da 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 -da. See it there, there, there. And then I can take all of these, I believe. I can take them all. Oh, goodness. Goodness. I think what I'm going to do is when we get to Tamara's, I'm just going to pull them in um, one by one. So from the email, because it'll be easier. She's got a number of beautiful, beautiful things that I don't want to miss them. And I'm afraid I'll miss them up if I try this this way. Oh, so, well, let's go back to where I was. Oh, she moves things all around. How am I supposed to find things? There it is. Go back to, back to live mode and publish. There we go. Yes, we're back to live mode. I was in preview mode there for a moment so that you wouldn't see me butsing around in the background. All right. Uh, no, did she say? So I just opened the email, so I uh, hope you are well rested and feeling well. I'm feeling fine. Bob's been, um, yes, we'll see. Some pieces I did yesterday and flipped and turned and photo mail. Oh, my goodness. Ah. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. It'll be fun to see these. I, I'm just getting a chance to see them. I haven't seen them. Oh, lovely color. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, my goodness. Well, let's get started with this with some show and tell because I have a couple of fine stories to share with you, too. And who knows? Uh, there may be some people dropping in from Gretchen's creative work hour. They said they might pop in. Um, but um, Alessandra, who runs it all, is in Leeds um, out in England. And so she... I think she's like eight hours ahead of us or something like that. Or behind. Anyway, she's usually asleep at this time of night. And um, and who don't, I don't know if the other people will. So we'll see. Uh, uh, see, I told you too many. Not too, never too many. Never too many. Artwork is never too many. So let's see what we have here. Okay, what what have we got here? Let's see. Uh, let what? Why is that? <coughs> let me see. Um, I was going to pull in. This this is the the picture that Larry did of of Mrs. Shepherd gone. It is delightful. Let's see. I'm going to add a little overlay here. A little camera overlay. Choo -choo -choo, camera A. Just a second. A little one. There we go. There we go. Isn't it delightful? Look at that. 
fine little picture. I love it, his painting. It's so wonderful. It is so my wonderful. It is just delightful. Coming out of the tree, out of the little leprechaun house, just, yes. How do you know that they have rainbow doors like that? Have you been spying in on the leprechauns, Mr. Larry? <coughs> Excuse me there. It is delightful. The little, little mushrooms. <coughs> and all the little details. Oh, the little lantern there hanging from the tree. I love it. It is just so cute. So cute. I'm going to mute myself for just a second while I cough. Ah, there. Now, yes. Took myself off mute there. Isn't it perfect? Yes, Tamara, I agree. Look at her shoes. And the camera. Ah, oh, that's a camera. I thought it was a lantern. I see the camera. Oh, how delightful. Oh, it is so, darling. Absolutely precious. I love it. I love it. I think I might steal it and take it back to Ireland with me. Yes, for sure. She'll never... Uh, it's a camera. That's really... It's just darling. Oh, my goodness. What do we have? Uh, applause here. <laughs> oh, you don't have a triangle. Or a party noise maker. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible party noise maker. Let's see. Do we have a bike? We have a bike. Yeah, a bicycle horn. She's got some very strange, very strange. Ooh, DJ air horn. What's this? Oh, yes, that's, that's what we need. That's what we need to celebrate that hard work. Celebrate that. Definitely. Yes, yay. I like that. I like that. Larry, that's delightful. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. It's so wonderful. Next, we have Susan. She sent this in and she says a few months ago, we talked about our names, their origin and flowers associated with the name. My name is Hebrew in origin and my namesake flower is Lily of the Valley. This is my pedestrian interpretation of a wooden box top. P.S. The whitish lines on the left are actually the reflection of the resin. Very cute. So what I did, I wanted to see it bigger. So let's see, let's get, I, I, I had to shift, turn it on its side because I wanted to see it bigger and then we'll get rid of this and we can all see it a wee bit bigger. There we go. Look at that. Lily of the Valley is one of my favorite too. Yes, uh, Gretchen's mother had um, a beautiful Lily of the Valley plant in her childhood in Gretchen's childhood home and it was just a delightful thing it was in their backyard kind of right outside the family room between that and the playhouse it was just a beautiful beautiful thing I wonderful it's wonderful I I think anybody would be just absolutely absolutely delighted to have that in there as a as a um uh, in uh, have a woof. She can't talk. She's had too much to drink already. Um, have that. There we go. On the top of any kind of decorative box that they had for it. Just, just think of the jewels you could keep in there. Oh, it is delight. Or a wee bit of gold. Mm, if you're lucky from a leprechaun. Yes. Uh, you sh you touch shake too much. It's fine. It's fine. We get to see it. It's so delightful. It's so delightful. Thank you very much. Let's see. Ta -da. <laughs> it is beautiful. It is beautiful, Susan. Now, uh, here's Gretchen. So we went out last night and this was one of her photographs that she got last night. This was the sunset uh, from the beach right next to the Heron Island ferry dock. And... Um, uh, it was just as the sun was setting and she took a long exposure to make the 
kind of the soft image of the uh, on on the water. Although the water was so still, there wasn't much sky, just some wispy clouds. But it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sunset. Yes, yes, come here. There, there we go. Yes, there it is. Yes, so that's one she got. That's, that's the only one she's developed out of the ones she took last night. She didn't take a whole lot. Um, and, and Bob, it, we, we stayed out, but then Bob is not dealing real well with the cold right now after this pneumonia. So as soon as the sun went down, he started to get chilled. So we decided to, to head it back in. But it was a delight because it was the first, it was the, oh, but how do you say it? Um, the, well, it was the first voyage of Vivian Van Goo, the her Gretchen's new van. She has named her new van Vivian Van Goo, you know, because the kids call her Grandma Goo, and she's the great Goo with her great aunts and, uh, and her great nieces and nephews and stuff like that. So instead of Van Gogh, it's Van Goo, and it's uh, Vivian. Instead of Vincent, it's Vivian. So Vivi, Vivi Van Goo is the name of her new Eurovan that she's taken it about to be in. And so it said uh, this was her maiden, her maiden voyage. That's what it's called, the maiden voyage. Out for photography and they went out for a wee bit uh, to take some photos. And that was that one. Now, the other thing that she had to share with you that she wanted me to, she said she's been doing slugs and she's not kidding. So she did yesterday, she did a Keith Herring slug. She had a class, online class yesterday with her friend Doc Rock. And so while they were all working away and doing stuff and things, she was painting a slug. Now, this is pretty ridiculous if you ask me, but it's pretty funny. Yes, this is her Keith Herring inspired slug for the slug hunt, the great slug hunt. Its mouth even has a little bit of a a heart on it. I don't know if you can see that. I'll hold it up there. Its mouth has a heart on it. It's quite the thing. But yes, so that's that one. The whole with uh, yeah, the black and white turned out well for her. It did. It did. She's going to do, she started to do some gnomes on one that she'd painted all white and a black, but then it, you couldn't see the whiskers on the gnomes. And I uh, said, so, well, that won't do at all. So you got to have whiskers. And um, so she's gone to, I think she's gone to uh, put it on the, a green background. Who knows? Or a blue. Who knows what they'll be? But that's that one. Yes. Yeah. Well done. Her niece will be fine and happy about that. <laughs> All right. And next we have Miss Tamara. But as you see, I pull it up and there's nothing there. So let's first go to the email and I'll pull them up one at a time. She's got these here. There she did. So she did these. And let me see if I can pull in another. Oh, da -da -da. Here we go. Here she did it. So these are, I'm not sure what she did, the order that they're in. I'm just going to pull them up one at a time. These are beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. They're either grouped together and then there's one. Oh yes, this will work. It cancels out the one before it. I really, oh, I love this. I lo it, oh, it's just, oh, so whimsical. Just the beauty of it all. Look at the, the the lacing on it. Isn't that what they call it? The lacing there. Uh, yes, isn't that what they call it? The lacing, I think, in the fluid art community. Yes, and here's another one. Ah, yes. Look at those. Oh, look at the eyes. Oh, do you t put in the comments what you see? What on this one? Tell me what you see. I know what I see. 
You see a face. I see a face. But what kind? I see a bull. It looks like a bull to me. Like the wonderful price and the eyes and the horns. Could it be? Could it be? Yes, see? I see the eyes and the nose. I love this. This is... Oh, you see a deer. That's... Oh, now when you say the deer, I see the deer now. Oh, I'm easily influenced. Ah, a deer. And I saw a bull. Maybe you haven't had as much Irish as I have. There. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, on to the next one. What have we got here? Here we go. Oh. These are like um, two cats heading away from each other. This is... Oh, you see a wolverine. That's a good one. Look at that. Look at that. Did uh, you ever seen the guy? I think he was on America's Got Talent that does the artwork. I mean, the shadow puppetry with his hands. Just, oh, goodness gracious. Let's see. Do -do -do -do. There we go. Yes. Yes. So beautiful. I love the colors and the blue and I just it's like there it's like the primary colors but with just enough of a variation just to make them interesting. Yes. Now where did my email go? I just had it. It hopped away. Oh there. Don't be doing that email. Then she has another one here. Yes. Oh, look at these. I like this. I like this. I like the leading lines from both their sides. It's a shadow change to color. Oh, it's a shadow change to color. Oh, oh that's a fancy thing to do. Oh, that's a delight. I love that. Changing the shadows to color. I've done, I've seen Gretchen do that on a couple of things. Oh, nice, a silhouette. All right, there's that one. Let's see, I did that. Here we are with a new one. I think she keeps flipping around. She's flipping us off. Oh, did I say that? <laughs> did I say that? Excuse me, Tamara, that wasn't very kind. <laughs> You're not flipping us off. You're just flipping them around. Hand puppets. Yes, they get the guy, he's, he's on um, America's Got Talent and they did that thing where they had the, the all the people come back who had been like winners or whatnot and they had special teams. And this young man from the Philippines who during COVID and they didn't have power at their house, he entertained himself by learning to do hand puppets. And it, uh, it was just amazing what he could do. That's kind of what that one with the pink and the, the blue and the little bitty gold reminded me of. <laughs> she thinks that's funny that she's flipping us off. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's the truth. Oh, now we have a new change. <clears throat> oh my goodness, look at this. This is like um this is like a stained glass window that hasn't been done. It's like it's got the outlines but not the rest. I see a little fox right in the middle. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I see a lamb. Uh oh. Maybe the fox has eaten the lamb. Uh oh. I love the movement. Yes, I do too. It's this this is beautiful. This is beautiful. This is this is it's a kind of crackling on the rocks that you'll see on the Washington coast on some of the beaches out on the uh, off in the Olympic National Park it's quite beautiful yes waiting for the color and she has one more for us here yes there we go ah and she flipped him again is it the same one that you flipped 
Oh, she flipped it. Uh, no, she flipped it. Is this a new one? Or did she flip it in? I think it's the same one, but she flipped them horizontal and vertical. That sounds like complicated math to me, perhaps geometry. That's where Gretchen and I are very similar. We both had to be tutored through geometry and couldn't, yeah. It was not the best thing in the world for us. Yeah. Oh, well, tis, tis years ago and never the thing to mind about. <clears throat> Flipped it again. See, she's just flipping good. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, she's. She's making herself laugh now. That's that's a bad sign, folks. Bucket fillers beware. Mrs. Shepherdcon's making herself laugh. Uh oh. Yes, tonight's work is quite exceptional, all of you. Exactly, 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 Miss Linda. I could just set it better myself, and thank you for saying that. It is very true. Everyone's work is quite exceptional. There we go. <laughs> All right. So, next we have. Ah, well, I think I might take off the hat to read the story because it's just, you know, who reads a story with a hat on? Well, sometimes you might. Now, to close the email so I don't get distracted by that. And I close that down. Ah, and it brings my book back. Yeah, it brings the books back to me. So tonight, I have two books for you. Um, there are, one is, it's quite sweet, and the other one is called Fiona's Luck. And I don't believe I read these last year. Now, Teresa Bateman wrote the first one, and it's illustrated by Kelly Murphy. The thing about Teresa Bateman is that she is, just like Gretchen, a librarian. She is um, a local librarian, I believe, well, she was born in Moscow, Idaho, but she moved to Washington State. And I believe she was a librarian in Federal Way. I'm not sure. Gretchen met her years ago when she did another book. and um, But she's done quite, quite a few. And she's quite good at this. And the illustrator, Kelly Murphy, is just wonderful. I think you're going to find this quite delightful. So tonight's book... Let's start, if I can find the back to the beginning. I was able to find this on um, a website called, what is am I on? What am I on? Archive.org. And I was able to, to check it out. It was only going to let me check it out for half an hour, but then I said, said I could check it out for 13 days. And I thought, well, that's delightful. Belvedere. Tiburon Library, wherever that turn is from. Somehow I found it. So let's see where we're going to go. What? Ah, there. So let's see if you can see. There it is. Fiona's Luck. So you can see that. Let me get my mug out of the way. And hold it. That's supposed to be camera B. Oh, I'm twisted on my side. How'd I get twisted on my side? Now I'm am I right side up and now I am. There we go. And it's there we go. Oh there. How did that happen? What? What do you do? You you come over here, you always get a little twisted. It's Fiona's luck by Teresa Bateman, illustrated by Kelly Murphy. I think you're going to love this. Her the illustrations are beautiful. Look at the fine little dog and the cow. And some people, and oops, we have somebody hiding there. Hmm. Fiona, it's always been one of my favorite names. Fiona's luck. Once, luck was as free to be had in Ireland as sunlight, and just as plentiful. It filled the air, and anyone could grab a handful of it as the need arose. This was largely due to the leprechauns, for they made luck like cows made milk. Ah, so true, so true. Let's see, I'm just checking before anybody else. Then the big folk arrived, 
They were so large, the luck clung to them wherever they went. Something will have to be done, the king of the leprechauns declared. We can't have those huge people soaking up all the luck. What would be left for us? So under the king's orders, the leprechauns wove fine golden threads into magical nets. Then, late one midsummer's eve, when the luck was at its height, they swept it up and stored it all in an oak chest by the king's throne, so he could distribute it where and when he chose. But the leprechauns had been too thorough. They not only scooped up the leprechaun luck, but any other luck that had been floating about as well. The land of Ireland fell into a time of great misfortune. Hens gave no eggs, and cows would not let down their milk. The potatoes rottened in the ground. Hmm. Now, it happened that in Ireland there lived a woman named Fiona. She knew the Lack of luck had to be the work of the leprechauns, so it followed that they alone could restore good fortune to the land. But giving luck back from a leprechaun would be like squeezing water from a stone. Not that it can't be done, but it usually requires more strength than you're apt to have. Sometimes cleverness, though, is worth more than strength. So Fiona took her last coins and used them to buy a cow and some chickens. Then every morning and evening she would take that cow into the barn. When she emerged she would be carrying two buckets slopping over with whiteness. Hmm. Ah, she's a fine cow. Fiona would say to anyone who asked, It's lucky I am to have her. Soon the rumors began. While others were short on luck, Fiona had pie pails of it. Every morning, Fiona would go into the chicken coop and emerge with her covered basket bulging with curves. Ah! The hens seem contented, she commented to the neighbors. I'm lucky to have them. And soon the rumors spread. While others were short on luck, Fiona had baskets of it. Then Fiona began digging in her garden and filling her wheelbarrow with round, dirt-covered lumps. It's not a good year for potatoes, Fiona said to all who passed. Still, I am lucky to have what I have. Now, the rumors had wings. While others were short on luck, Fiona had wheelbarrows full of it. Oh, naturally, word of this unexpected luck made its way. To the leprechaun king. One day Fiona was walking across a green meadow when she suddenly found herself surrounded by a small crowd of fair folk. In a trice they grasped the hem of her skirt and ran around her in a circle. She turned to keep up the skirt from wrapping around her knees and as she turned the landscape blurred. Then it sharpened again Fiona found herself beneath the earth in the throne room of the Leprechaun King. It was a glorious cavern with rich tapestries hanging against tall granite walls and floor cobbled entirely of jewels. Torches and candlelight made everything sparkle and music filled the air. In front of Fiona, stood the throne, and on the throne sat the leprechaun king. He beckoned to her, and Fiona approached, her eyes scanning the room for the missing luck. 
she was sure as smoke loves fire that the king would be keeping it close to himself. As she curtsied, she spied the oak chest. It was glowing slightly, sealed by a spell. Since everyone knows that no lock can hold luck for long. What would you be wanting of me? Fiona asked politely. And the king scowled. Where are you getting all your luck? Who's been giving it to you and why? He demanded. Fiona's eyes widened in innocence. I have no luck, she declared. Indeed, here I am, a captive of the leprechaun. If that's luck, you can take it. So you claim to have no luck? The king inquired, raising an eyebrow. Well, let's put it to the test. And then, when I prove that you've lied to me, as forfeit I'll take all the luck you have and put it in the rest that I guard. His eyes flicked toward the chest. Fiona frowned. That's a sorry bargain for me, she said. Yet I know the rules. If a test is to be made, then a forfeit must be paid by the loser. I haven't lied, so when I'm proved truthful, I demand a wish as your forfeit. The king's eyes turned shrewd. Mm, agreed, he said slyly. I'll give you a wish for exactly the value of the luck you have if my tests prove me wrong. Fiona knew she was being cheated. A woman with wit, though, can turn even a leprechaun's cleverness against himself. She glanced at the chest and then, barely keeping a smile from her lips, nodded. So the agreement was made. At the king's gesture, one of the magicians brought out a low table and placed upon it three beautiful shells. Under one he hid a small gold coin. Then he whisked the shelves around and over and under it in a blur no human eye can follow. No, the king said, where's the gold? There was one chance in three of her picking correctly, and a person with good luck would find the gold every time. Even a person with a little luck would find the gold occasionally. But though they played the game over and over, Fiona could never locate the coin. It was as if she had no luck at all. Another test, the king ordered. The leprechaun harp was brought forth. Now, leprechaun's instruments make music by the luck of the player. A person with good luck would be able to play something just by stroking the strings. Even a person with a hint of luck would probably finger out a simple melody. But in Fiona's hands, the strings went out of tune. And no matter how she stroked and plucked, nothing but ear-bending noise resulted. Ugh. The king shuddered and frowned. Could he have been mistaken? Perhaps the last test would prove him right. Bring out the chess set, he demanded. Ah, oh. ah. Oh. He and Fiona faced each other across the board. The king made his opening move. Nobody could hope to beat the leprechaun king, for he was steeped in luck. But a person with good luck could last a while against him. Even a person with a bit of luck had hopes of making a few good moves. <clears throat> Despite the king trying his hardest to lose, Fiona was beaten soundly within two minutes. The king eyed her in am amazement. You have no luck at all, he declared. But what about the milk and the eggs and the potatoes? Fiona sighed. If I fill my milk bucket with whitewash or my egg basket with pine cones or my wheelbarrow with dirty rocks, Surely that's my own business. I told you I had no luck, and I didn't lie. Now I'll take my wish and be on my way. And the king nodded slowly. 
Indeed, I did promise your wish, but for exactly the value of the luck you actually had. You've proven to me that you have no luck at all, so that's all you can wish for. Nothing. He smiled at the cleverness of his reasoning all well within the limits of the leprechaun law. Then his smile wavered, for Sfiona was smiling too. So I can wish for nothing? she asked. He nodded, puzzled. Then I wish for a hole, Fiona continued. A hole is nothing, after all, and that's exactly the value of my wish. I wish for a hole that will never go away, and I wish it to be in the lid of that chest. And she pointed to the chest of luck by the king's throne. The power of a wish, rightfully earned, is not to be denied. A hole appeared in the chest, and the luck began escaping immediately. The king howled with rage, but what could he do? He had made a bargain and was forced to keep it. With an angry wave of his hand, Fiona was whirled away, and when she opened her eyes, she was back in the meadow, the sun just rising over the hills. If there was an extra sparkle to the sunshine, and the grass glowed greener than before, well, it was only to be expected. And that is why, from this that day to this, you'll always find some luck roaming free around Ireland, for the hole is still in the chest, and the king must keep his promise. But as for young Fiona, well, as she herself said, luck's all well and good, but myself... I'd rather depend on my wits. And that's the story of Fiona's wish. Oh, well, yes. That's, that's that one. That was fun. Fiona's Luck. That was a fine book. I like that one. What do you think? The luck of the air. Fiona was tuned in. Yes, she was. Had to grant her wish. Fiona was not stupid. No, she wasn't. She was a clever girl. Uh, uh, Tamara Bate makes, Teresa Bateman makes a delightful story in this. She has always been able to take different legends and make them into, oh, just delightful, delightful stories. <coughs> Ow. I clack got at that one. Oops, I forgot. And there... And here's the other one I'm going to read tonight. I'm giving it to the spot where I wanted to. This is a sweet one. I found. I'd never read this book before. You're not. There. Come on. I'm trying to get it back to the beginning of the book. There we go. Move it to the beginning. There we go. There. I got it. So what do you think? Did you like it? I hope you did. I'm glad. I'm glad you liked it. It is. It is a delightful story. Just, yeah, the illustrations and that was uh, Kelly Murphy. Fine Irish name if you have to uh, say so. Uh, Kelly Murphy. Ah, yes. Mm. Ah, the Irish is good. She may not have had it ready for me, but at least she had it in the house. I didn't, and this year it wasn't that South African stuff. You know, last year she had the audacity to try to pass off Amarula, that South African substitute for a good glass of Baileys. No, haha. This year she had the decency to have a gla real glass of Irish cream in the house for me. Yes, it could be that I might have left a few things scrambled when I left last time in payment for doing that. So she knew, learned her, her, learned her lesson. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to have her, her daughter. And, um, yes, oh, 
Pick rate? Let's put on a lead in the beat. Let's see. <sighs> Miss Gretchen and I are distant color. Our great grandmothers were twin sisters. Yes. So Sarah came here and married John Kern <coughs> and dad, 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 and that's Gretchen's family. My great grandmother stayed in Ireland. And so that's how, and, but she married a leprechaun. So that's how this all came about. Now, Gretchen's daughter, Annalena, in May, is coming to Scotland and I hope to Ireland too, although her husband is Irish, completely Irish, is, and his grandfather was born in Ireland. Oh, a delightful young man, Paddy was. But uh, Philip, and, but they're coming to Scotland and the, and the British Isles, and then they're going for their 40th birthday. So I might just pop in and bother them a bit. But the girls, you know, they're, they're, um, they're less... They're, I, I do get to talk to them once in a while, but they're, they're just a little bit off about their mother doing this all the time. So anyway, that's the way it goes. The next story that we have is called Whiskers Finds His Luck. Let's see. Check in with everybody here. Fiona was tuned in. Go, Fiona. Glad you like the story, Tamra. I'm so glad. Grandparents are such a blessing. Oh, such a blessing. Although Gretchen's grandmother's name was, n no, I mean, there's no Norwegian, no, there's no Irish in Gretchen's grandmother. What's uh, her, her grandmother on her mother's side? Her grandmother on her father's side. Yes, definitely. That, that was, that was Sarah's daughter. Gretchen's grandmother, grandma, grandmother Walker Carey was Sarah's daughter, and she was, she was truly Irish. Um, a little bit of a, a, a stick-in-the-mud Irish, though. Gretchen's other grandmother, though, no. Hildegard Harriet Wilhelmina Fries. Who could even say that? That's, that's about as German as they come. And that's, that's the other grandmother, but yes. So that, you know, Gretchen is such a, such a mutt of all things. Norwegian and German and and Irish and Scottish too, I believe, in there someplace. Who knows? But next we have the next book for us, and it is called Whiskers Finds His Luck. And it is right. Here we go. And I think you're going to like it. Let me see something. I'm looking for a... Where did I lose something? I just lost... There it is. There it is. There we go. Whiskers Finds His Luck by Shauna Gorian. I didn't find out much about her. Gretchen didn't leave me notes about this particular author. Maybe it'll tell us a little bit about the end. Looks like the person did the illustrations too. Oh. Whiskers Finds His Luck, a St. Patrick's Day story. In a quiet little town on a hill over yonder stood a cat named Whiskers who loved to wander. He wandered with interest, he wandered with glee, for spring had arrived and happy was he. He skipped over rocks and fields of clover till a strange sight appeared and he stopped to look it over. There, wa there it was, a house so small, just a mouse could fit inside. So he found a spot from which to watch, a spot in which to hide. He waited, and he waited, and not one mouse appeared. Instead, to his surprise, came a wee man with a beard. But plain and ordinary, this little man was not. With boots and belt and tall top hat, he was unusual, Whiskers thought. The man looked weary and said aloud, At last a place to rust. I hope the owner of this house won't mind me as a guest. Whiskers quickly leaped out, and the man stopped with a jump. Then suddenly 
a trap door fell and landed with a thump. What was that? said Whiskers as his eyes flew open wide. Be careful, it's a trap! With great surprise, the wee man cried. Who are you? said Whiskers to the man dressed all in green. I'm a leprechaun, said he. But do you know what you've just seen? Whiskers shook, his head confused, so the leprechaun sat. Then he explained what he had met, quite in detail, to the cat. That was that that the house was a trap. If he'd stepped through its door, he'd be stuck there a prisoner and could come out never more. That a child would have come and taken him home, where he'd be forced to live forever, like a simple garden gnome. Oh! If you hadn't come along, I would have been tricked. You're a good luck charm, dear cat, I predict. You can help me, brave cat, said the man with delight. But how, Whiskers asked, how could he be right? Ooh. We must scour these hills with your luck at our side, for there's treasure to be found. We'll search far and wide. So Whiskers stepped in besides the strange little man, over fields and hills of green. But what was his plan? Many hours passed by as they searched high and low, under rocks, inside logs, along the creek bed below. When suddenly a blaze of color shot across the sky, a rainbow shining brightly, Whiskers gazed up with a sigh. He'd never seen such beauty, nor had ventured such a quest. What a lucky day indeed it was. He brimmed with happiness. We found it, said the leprechaun, a proper pot of gold. Good luck indeed you are to me, brave cat, so dear, so bold. It was so much loot, rich they would be. Whiskers' eyes flew wide, very rich he could see. But Whiskers had no need for gold. You keep it all, dear sir. For I am rich with luck indeed. Then he began to purr. Do you mean it? said the leprechaun. For it's yours as much as mine. Whiskers gave him a nod and the leprechaun said, Then you're a very rare feline. True luck will follow where'er you go and happiness as well. I thank you kindly, sweet dear cat, as I bid you. Farewell. So Whiskers meowed and turned to leave, a smile upon his face. He'd seen new things and made a friend, which nothing could replace. What a strange spring day he'd come to know. What a curious day he'd spent. But best of all, he'd have good luck, no matter where he went. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And that. Shana Gorin loves writing and publishing books for children and is the author of several picture books and middle grade series, including 25 plus books. She's written Roscoe the Rascal, Who Am I? A Cat Named Whiskers, Valentine's Day, Grandma Says Hush. Oh dear. She's, look for more books. Yes, Shana Gorian. That's her name. That's delightful. Yay. Stories, great stories. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Bow legged grandpas. <laughs> That's. <laughs> oh, my grandpa. Uh, grandpas. Grandpas are the best. It's quite a delightful fun things to have. Yes. So that's look at we it's time for us to nearly be done because guess who's nearly out of our Irish? Oh I lasted through the whole show. Hopefully there'll be a bit more in the bottle. I, yes, the pictures in this book were pretty, very pretty well. 
Uh, very nicely done. There's one. I go back to it. If I can find it, go back, go back. There's here's. I uh, go back to this picture. Here you go. This is one of my favorites. This picture right here, with the the leprechaun walking away and his waist. Look at the details in his waistcoat. How it's buttoned up the back, and he's got his vest underneath, and his boots. And the, everything, and his hat, and his, oh, it's just, and the details on, on Whiskers and the color gradation of Whiskers the cat. And you notice, the cat is black. And oftentimes it's thought to be that black cats are ill luck. Ah, but not this black cat. This black cat tells us that they're full of luck. I like that. I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm glad you thought they were awesome books. I'm glad. Yes, my grandfather uh, the, had red hair also. Just, yes, quite delightful. Oh, my goodness. So good. Well, everybody, I hope you had a good time. It has just been a delight to see you once again. I so enjoy this time. And I have to tell you all, it warms my heart with the outpouring of love that you show to my Gretchen. It's just such a blessing that you are in her life. She loves it. She appreciates each and every one of you. And it brings her great joy to share these stories with you. And, you know, she is a wee bit of a mm, pain in the tokas on St. Patty's Day, so that's why she lets me take over. So, I for that, I thank her for. But I do thank all of you for being such a blessing in her life and for bringing such joy to what she does and to, uh, to helping her spread the word about these wonderful books and the pictures and for sharing your own art. Oh, my goodness. Oh, she wanted me to tell you. I forgot to tell you two, two, two things. Two things. One, uh, news, her, her sister, Carolyn... Her grandson, Rylan, was just nominated and accepted to West Point. He's one of the two nominees from the state of Oregon. And he's been, he's gone there. Yeah, he's a, a congressional nominee for West Point. Ah, amazing, amazing young man. But that's, that's one thing that she wanted me to tell you, to share. Something. But the other thing she wanted me to share is um, she read a book a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, before she went down to see the grandkids, a book called Rita's World, done by a young girl uh, with Down syndrome. And on her YouTube channel, she got a message in the comments from Rita's mother saying thank you for reading the story, Rita's book, on the channel. And then she sent a message back and said what an honor it was, because it was a true honor to read her book and to share Rita's wonderful art. And Rita said, and she said to tell the thing, she said to say, you're welcome. And I just, I wanted to share with you, she wanted for you to know just as soon as possible that what we're doing, what she's doing, and everything, how it had reached, and that it, that Rita had actually heard her read the story and it had been part of it. so honored to be part of the whole bucket fill in the great brigade and, and to fill your buckets. So that's a delightful thing. All right, you guys. So Thursday, she will be back um, and I'll be gone. And I'll have, yes, <laughs> I've made a mess of her place. Yes, quite delightfully so, but yes. And uh, hopefully there'll be some more slugs done. She's got a fair number to me. I think she's going to put me to doing some. Oh, I might, I might do an Irish slug. I could do little leprechauns and shamrocks on one. That's a delightful thing. I could do that. What could I do? Ooh, a holiday slug. We could do an Easter bunny slug. Oh, now I'm thinking. Now I'm thinking. She's just run out of ideas. All right. Thank you so much, Susan, for the safe travels. We'll be doing, yeah, you know, in the blink of an eye, I'll be back, you know, because everyone knows that leprechauns live at the end of a rainbow behind the blink of an eye. 
but it won't take me long to just scooch right back over the rainbow and be right back to Ireland. So it's not a tough thing to come over here. It's just sort of magical. And I thank you for inviting me and for making me feel so welcome. You all are wonderful. So until next time, everyone, as Gretchen always says, and she means it truly, keep looking for the beauty hidden in plain sight. It's all around you. But the first place each and every one of you will find it is when you look in your own mirror and you'll see that beauty looking right back at you. Until next year, I'll be back. But until Gretchen's back on Thursday, you take care, you have a good week, and you fill your own bucket and someone else's. Pint of beer, grief and tears, there's mother then not to reap the corn. For I was born, I cut the stout like corn to banish calls and goblins of bread, you pair of frogs. Let all the bugs frighten and all the dogs on the rocky road, the double and one, two, three, four, five. The hare and turn her down the rocky road, all the way to double and whack for lolly in Mullingar that night I rested limbs so weary started by daylight me spirits blight and there he took a drop of the pure I keep me heart from sinking that's the paddy's cure please on for drinking the see the lassie smile but now the while will let me carry a strike which set your heart a bubble and that's the fire was hired she's I required the lie was nearly tired of the rocky road to double and one two three four five put the hair and turn her down the rocky road and all the way to double and whack for lolly Drank a pint of beer, grief and tears, this mother then off to reap the corn. For I was born, I cut the stout like corn to banish calls and goblins of bread, you pair of frogs. Let all the bugs frighten and all the dogs on the rocky road, the double and one, two, three, four, five. The hare and turn her down the rocky road, all the way to double and whack for lolly in Mullingar that night I rested limbs so weary started by daylight me spirits blight and there he took a drop of the pure I keep me heart from sinking that's the paddy's cure please on for drink and I see the lassie smile but now the while will let me carry a strike but set your heart a bubble and that's the fire was hired she's I required to lie was nearly tired of the rocky road to double in one two three four five put the hair and turn her down the rocky road and all the way to double in whack for lolly Drank a pint of beer, grief and tears, this mother then off to reap the corn. For I was born, I cut the stout like corn to banish calls and goblins of bread, you pair of frogs. Let all the bugs frighten and all the dogs on the rocky road, the double and one, two, three, four, five. The hare and turn her down the rocky road, all the way to double and whack for lolly in Mullingar that night I rested limbs so weary started by daylight me spirits blight and there he took a drop of the pure like keep me hard from sinking that's the paddy's cure please on for drink and I see the lassie smile but now the while will let me carry a strike but set your heart a bubble and that's the fire was hired she's I required to lie was nearly tired of the rocky road to double in one two three four five put the hair and turn her down the rocky road and all the way to double in whack for lolly Drank a pint of beer, grief and tears, this mother then off to reap the corn. For I was born, I cut the stout like corn to banish calls and goblins of bread, you pair of frogs. Let all the bugs frighten and all the dogs on the rocky road, the double and one, two, three, four, five. The hare and turn her down the rocky road, all the way to double and whack for lolly in Mullingar that night I rested limbs so weary started by daylight me spirits blight and there he took a drop of the pure I keep me heart from sinking that's the paddy's cure please on for drink and I see the lassie smile but now the while will let me carry a strike but set your heart a bubble and that's the fire was hired she's I required to lie was nearly tired of the rocky road to double in one two three four five put the hair and turn her down the rocky road and all the way to double in whack for lolly ride.